I'd be interested in your opinion on the recent th- – there's been a recent brouhaha over the fact that it turns out that in an, a very large number of the uh, experiments in psychology cannot be replicated. Yeah. And this has caused quite a stir and has caused people, at least in the pub- public popular conversation – to start wondering aloud about just how good, you know, how how good of a science psychology is and how good the theories are, and I, I guess I'd, I'm interested in your opinion on this issue as it applies to psychology, just because it's been so much so discussed in the last few weeks since the since the study came out. But I'm also was going to ask you whether there are similar problems in economics, whether economic theory uh, experiments also resist uh, rep- replication. So I don't know the answer to the second question, just as a matter of fact. Uh, to what extent have people tried and failed to replicate the results that are found in, and as I said, the experiments in economics are to some degree artificial. You put people in a laboratory. Now, in experimental economics, which is a field, experimental economics, which consists of studies in which people try to find out by varying certain kinds of conditions. I'll give one example. Um, this is about... Uh, would I be more willing to support the provision of public goods, which cost me something, which but which benefit everybody, right? You know, you, you've got this classic problem, the classic public goods problem, which is if I make an investment that the benefits are, you know, broadly available to everybody, generally I'm going to make a socially too small investment in that activity because I don't internalize the benefits that other people are getting. Okay. Right. So, so I'll underinvest. So, one argument for the state, for you know, coercive, centralized public action, taxes in order to pay for the national defense, which no one would be willing to pay for on their own. Right. Is that we need these public goods, but our incentives are all screwed up about providing them in an uh, autonomous way. So we need to be, in effect, coerced into providing them for our own benefit. Are people more willing to go along with that coercion if they have a say? And how the monies are being spent than if they don't. So we can create a laboratory environment. I'm just giving an extended example in which we have a kind of goods game where people get to decide how much they want to contribute and the benefits are available to everybody. And there's a precondition where either they get to discuss and vote on the protocol or they don't get to vote on it. And then by comparing how people provide for the public good in the condition in which they have a say in which they don't have a say, People want to draw a conclusion about the extent to which democracy, participatory democracy, promotes uh, uh, citizenship and public spiritedness. Uh, Now, that's a large, large step from a laboratory experiment. Now, so what I'm trying to say is it may be that in the journal, when you send the paper in, uh, the editor uh, uh, says uh, uh, that uh, we'll publish this paper. And then someone sees it and they say, aha, I want to replicate this experiment. Of course, the problem is going to be it was the American Economic Review where the original paper is published, but the replication isn't fit for the American Economic Review. It's going to be in a second tier journal run by somebody at a second tier, you know, not at Princeton or Stanford or MIT, but, you know, whatever. And so there's really very little incentive for the most talented people in the profession to engage in that kind of activity. But I I actually don't know the answer to the question, is there a replication crisis in economics comparable to that that has been exposed in psychology? Um, I, I, I'm generally, I'm not an empiricist. Okay. I I just want to tell you, I don't do experiments. I'm not a, I'm a theoretician. Uh, so, you know, nobody, you can replicate my theorems just by proving, you know, proof is correct. (laughs) But, but, um, I, I, I generally think that the major journals now are requiring people who do large scale empirical investigations to make their data publicly available. Okay. So that another investigator It's probably going to be a graduate student. It's probably going to come up in some advanced graduate class where the instructor says, go get that data set and see if you can't replicate this guy's findings. So then you have to get down in the bowels of the data. You have to deal with all the mechanics about how you organize and code it. And then you have to do the statistical analysis to see whether the outcomes come out. Now, that kind of thing is is being done quite a bit in economics and famously – uh, Stephen Levitt has, for example, the uh, well-known economist, author of Free Economics, a, a first-rate economist, a winner of the John Bates Clark Medal in Economics uh, uh, some years ago, um, which honors the best economists under the age of 40 every year and so on. So this is Stephen Levitt, University of Chicago. He's a, he's a major player. But he's had to 
I'll call back a couple of results in some of his papers where a graduate student at Berkeley has gotten the data and gone through and gone through and found out, aha, he made a mistake in coding some variable with a one instead of a zero. And when you do it the right way, his result uh, collapses at the first stage of his two stage least squares and now, you know, blah, blah, right. blah. And uh, I had to say, oops, you know, so that kind of thing is happening with empirical investigations where the data can be made publicly available. Since experimental investigation isn't as critical in economics, I don't know that the replication of experiment question has come up. But these lab experiments that the experimental economists are doing with the little programs at the computer screens are very easy to replicate. Anybody can get the protocol and get a, you know, 20 or 40 yeah. undergraduates in a room and, and see if the things come out the same. And do we know whether in that small arena of economics that is experimental, do we know how successful replication has been or has it been sort of a fiasco like in psychology? No, my impression is success is pretty successful. My impression, I stand to be corrected here. If anybody in the audience knows better than I do about this is that um, we don't really hear about these results unless they get replicated. I mean, they don't become canonical. Mm, I see. They don't gain the status of having a purchase on the profession's attention and because the replication of these laboratory experiments is pretty easy to do. I see. And so do you have any do you have any feelings about what happened in the second? I guess I guess what I'm wondering is whether in general we would expect that social science would have a poorer rate of replicability than physical science. That we would expect that as a matter of course, even if only because it's much more difficult to simulate the initial condi the original conditions. In a, when the when the when the the palette one is working on is a social palette as opposed to just you know space or 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 a, or a few substances or um um you know yeah. should should we ex in other words are we being a bit unfair is this is this jumping on psychology a bit unfair because we should expect that of course social science experiments are going to be less rep rep replicatable than physical science experiments are going to have a poorer rate of replicability. I think that's right for the reasons that you just stated, that there is uh, every reason to, it's going to be harder to exactly recreate the conditions of the initial investigation. And so, uh, and that's one reason why I say with respect to this laboratory experimentation that the experimental economists do, where it's relatively easy to replicate the computer program that everybody sat and looked at. Uh, but it might be pretty hard in some psychological experiments, and I'm not an expert in this field, to, to get that replication just right. Also, to the extent that there's noise, I mean, I find the result, but there's always variance, right? There's always an error. There's, a, you know, results can happen by chance, you know, uh, sometimes. I mean, I can, you know, if I flip a coin long enough, I'm going to get 10 straight heads. That doesn't mean that, you know, yeah. the coin is weighted in favor of heads. Uh, kind of thing like that. There's a chance that of uh, the original finding was not a faithful replication of the underlying structure, but just a noisy observation of that structure. Hence, when I repeat the experiment, if there's a lot of noise in the uh, 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 inferential process, I might not I might not get the same result just because the first result was what it was by chance and not by yeah. fidelity to the true structure. No. I, I I think it's I think we do. We are expecting a bit too much from the social sciences. I think I think that because we don't think enough about and talk enough about the difference between what the social sciences do and what the physical sciences do, we expect of the social sciences a similar kind of result that we expect from the physical, um, which is unfair. But in it, but also I would say we are, in a sense, through our policy, um, our policies, we are trusting the social sciences maybe a little bit too much. Don't you think? I mean. I mean, we are We're patient enough, it seems yeah, to me. Andy. Yeah, yeah. In other words, in a, a, a single finding is not is not uh, a conclusion, you know. And so we keep your powder dry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there's that study, but wait a minute, it hasn't been replicated, or it's not. You know, let's let's wait. Let's see if we do it in a different population. If we do it on the other side of the Atlantic or right. the equator. Let's see. You know, it might take five years, not five months, before we have a sense of what the answer is here. Interesting, provocative, but let's let's keep our powder dry. Yeah. But of course, the public communications mechanisms are not friendly to patients, and and I guess policymakers are very yes. are very are pushing very hard 
um, to get so-called answers so that they can go ahead and fix problems for which there's tremendous political pressure being put upon them to fix. Um, but I sometimes fear or worry that we're employing all sorts of remedies based on science that we're treating as if this was like, you know, chemistry, but we really don't know very well at all what's the cause of some of these phenomena, especially some so of them. What's an example? What's an example of the, the fear that you have there? Well, you know, uh, some of the remedies that we bring to bear, for example, for all sorts of uh, negative social behavior, um, um, uh, you know, theories of, 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 you know, how we deal with kids who are unruly in the classroom, how mm -hmm. we do, you know, I am disturbed by the fact that so many of my undergraduates, uh, have been medicated for much of their, uh, for much of their teen years. Mm -hmm. Um, people who just looking at them, I would think would never have been medicated, uh, or, or even occurred to people to medicate them, uh, when I was a kid in school, um, you know, yeah. back in the seventies or whatever, um, it almost seems to me like, like, you know, we're theories of punishment, you know, the area that you're interested in, um, yeah. you know, locking people up for long periods of time. I mean, do we have any reason to think that this, uh, that this actually solves problems? And I think we, we have many reasons to think that we don't when we look at other countries that don't incarcerate the way we do, as right. you know better than I do. So I guess I think that we're bringing a lot of social science to bear on some very important social problems that we have. Um, but p placing too much confidence in it and, and, and engaging in remedies, which really have tremendous consequence. I mean, you, you medicate whole generations of young people. I don't think you know what kind of people you're going to wind up with when you're done with it, you know? Um, so, and I wonder whether part of this is because we simply don't appreciate the extent to which the social sciences simply don't provide us with the kind of knowledge that physical sciences do and that we have to be a lot more careful with what we do with the results. Yeah. So that's my that's my feeling about it at least. <laughs>